We've now often referred to this very simple circular flow diagram, but we know from the very beginning of the course that the circular flow diagram for a real economy is a lot more complicated than this. So we're going to begin to add elements to that circular flow diagram. And the first one we're going to add is the government. And in particular, we're going to focus on flows of money to the government in the form of taxes. And that's going to lead us to the concept of tax incidence. Tax incidence is about who pays for a tax. And we're going to think about that in the context of a $1 tax per gallon of gasoline. Now, if you're going to impose a $1 tax per gallon of gasoline, you can legally do it or statutorily do it in one of two ways. You can either say that consumers have to pay the tax, or you can say that firms have to pay the tax. These are two different versions of statutory incidence, where the statutory incidence of a tax is who is legally obligated to pay the tax. In one case, consumers are legally obligated. In the other case, firms are legally obligated. But we want to think about the economic impact of those two ways of writing tax laws. So here we have four graphs that are identical, each of the gasoline market prior to the imposition of a tax. So we have gallons of gasoline on the horizontal axis, the price per gallon on the vertical axis, a demand curve in the market emerging from households, and a supply curve emerging from firms. And of course, we have an equilibrium price and quantity determined by the intersection of supply and demand. Now let's ask what happens when we impose the $1 per gallon tax on consumers. What that means is that when consumers go and pump their gas, they pay a certain price to the gas station. But then they have to pay a dollar per gallon to the government on top of that. So we can ask, what's going to change in that picture? Well, firms aren't impacted by that tax law at all. It's all about consumers having to pay. So that would indicate that the supply curve, which comes from firms, wouldn't change. What about the demand curve? Think about a consumer who was willing to pay a certain price for the last gallon of gas that they bought. Would that consumer still be willing to pay that same price for that gallon of gasoline if they knew that they still owed a dollar to the government? Well, the answer is no. They'd be willing to pay a dollar less because they know once they've paid the dollar to the government, the price is back up to what they were originally willing to pay. So if that's true, then this point on the demand curve is going to shift down by a dollar. And that's going to be true for every other point on that demand curve. So the whole demand curve is going to shift down by a dollar. That leads us to a new equilibrium with a lower price that we're going to call P prime and a lower quantity being transacted in the market. Now, is that price a dollar lower than the original price? We can see the answer to that question in the picture. We know that the difference between these two demand curves is exactly a dollar. We can put that difference right here. And if that distance is a dollar, then the distance that lies below the original green price P star is less than a dollar. So we see that the equilibrium price falls, but it falls by less than a dollar. What about the case where the firms are statutorily or legally obligated to pay the tax? Well, now consumers or households aren't impacted by the tax. They don't have to do anything differently. Their demand curve isn't going to change. So the supply curve must be changing. Now remember what a market supply curve is. It's just the sum of all the individual supply curves from firms. And what are those individual supply curves? They are just portions of the marginal cost curves of the firms. When the government imposes a $1 per gallon tax on firms, the government is raising the marginal cost of every gallon of gasoline for those firms, in addition to all the other costs you incur for bringing a gallon of gasoline to market, you now have to pay a dollar to the government. So the marginal cost curve for every firm is going to shift up by a dollar. And since the supply curve for the firms is just 
a portion of that marginal cost curve, that supply curve is going to shift up by a dollar. And the market supply curve is just a sum of all of those supply curves. So that means the market supply curve must shift up by a dollar. So we can shift up that market supply curve by a dollar. So that's exactly equal to one dollar. And that's going to take us to a new equilibrium with a lower quantity and a higher price. Let's call that price P double prime. So now we have this higher price, and we can again ask, is that price higher by a dollar? And we can again see the answer in the picture. The difference between these two supply curves is exactly one dollar. So we can draw that difference right here. If that distance is a dollar, then the distance that lies above P star is less than a dollar. So this picture tells us that the shift in the supply curve will cause the equilibrium price to rise, but by less than a dollar. Now, so far, it looks like these two different ways of writing the tax law has different impacts on the market for gasoline. In the one case, the demand shifts down, causing a lower equilibrium price. And in the other case, the supply curve shifts up, causing a higher equilibrium price. But now let's look a little bit beneath the surface. So in these lower graphs, I'm going to unclutter the picture in the upper graph by only taking what we absolutely need. So if you look at this upper graph, this new equilibrium price and quantity can be read off of this wedge between the demand and supply curves. This is a $1 wedge that fits to the left of the original equilibrium and the lower point of that determines the new equilibrium price. And where that wedge is placed determines the new equilibrium quantity. So let's just bring that wedge down to this picture. This is a $1 wedge, where we know that this is going to be the new quantity in the market. And this lower part gives us the price P prime. But what is that price? Well, that's the price that consumers are paying to the firms. But it's not the price that consumers ultimately pay, because under this tax law, consumers still owe another dollar to the government for every gallon that they purchased. So the actual price that consumers pay is not the price that they pay to the firms. It's a dollar higher than that. So this price is actually the price that firms receive. So we're going to denote it PF. And at the upper end of the dollar wage is the price that consumers end up paying once they've paid for the tax that they're legally obligated to pay. What about this case? Again, we see that that new price is determined by a $1 wedge that's fit to the left of the original equilibrium. So we can take this wedge down to this graph. It's going to be exactly equal to $1. And at the upper end of that, we're going to have this price P double prime. But what is that price? That's the price that the consumers are paying to the firms, but it's not the price that the firms get to keep because now the firms still have to pay the dollar of tax to the government. So the price that the firms get to keep is exactly a dollar lower than the price that consumers paid. So the upper price is, against, is again the price that consumers pay. But the price that firms get to keep is a dollar lower than that. It lies at the lower end of that wedge. So this is the price that firms get to keep. And of course, the quantity in the market gets determined by where that $1 wedge lies. Now let's look at the two pictures. They are identical. In both cases, we fit a $1 wedge to the left of the original equilibrium, with the higher price being the price that consumers end up paying, and the lower price being the price that firms get to keep. This is why we say that the economic incidence of a tax does not depend on the statutory incidence of a tax. Let me write that down. The economic incidence of a tax does not 
depend on the statutory incidence. The statutory incidence is different between the two tax laws. In this case, consumers are statutorily or legally required to pay the tax. In this case, firms are legally or statutorily required to pay the tax. But the economic incidence, who actually ends up paying the tax, is exactly the same in both cases. In both cases, consumers pay a portion of the tax by paying a higher price, and firms pay a portion of the tax by receiving a lower price. 